up in several states right now. Major storms damaging winds, the tornado sirens, and images of twisters bracing for a potentially dangerous night ahead. We're also watching a Category 4 storm packing 155 mile per hour winds. Also breaking tonight, the mystery meeting at the White House. The Republican congressman leading the investigation into Russia's meddling. Now, new questions tonight about his secret meeting on the White House grounds. The school plot revealed tonight the plan to shoot it up and bomb the school. The honors student and her alleged arsenal right here. The two plane crashes, one into a home, the other breaking apart in mid-flight. Authorities say the family was coming home from spring break. And the consumer warning tonight, if the phone rings, the one question they warn you not to answer. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to be back with you here on a Monday night. More on that secret and controversial meeting at the White House. Our team is standing by, but we do begin tonight with another major headline playing out right now. Severe storms hitting at this hour. 15 million Americans warn that this could be a dangerous night on the roads. Reports of tornadoes already this large twister in Mississippi. Giant hail smashing into this windshield in Texas. Authorities in several states now warning of storms bringing damaging winds. ABC's Adrian Banker is in the storm zone tonight. Tonight, sounding the alarm in Tennessee. We have tornado sirens going off in Adamsville. A dangerous system moving east after pummeling the heartland over the last 24 hours. Funnel clouds forming in Oklahoma. Oh, it's roping out now. This twister dropping and tearing through the plains. Drivers racing for shelter under gas station canopies as hail battered the Dallas area. You could hear it coming from the distance, just like a stampede. Some stones the size of baseballs. In Little Elm, more than 70% of the school buses are out of commission. It's all part of a multi-day storm outbreak that brought more than 200 reports of severe weather. Here's a frame from a mobile home that was blown off. An EF2 tornado in Arkansas and straight line winds up to 100 miles per hour destroying this Louisiana church. And we've got ominous clouds behind us here. The rain's starting to come down again. We've seen thunder and lightning. Here in Louisville, we're under a severe weather watch all night long. We could see wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour, large hail, and possibly tornadoes. David? All right, under a watch there in Louisville. Adrian, thank you. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z, who is tracking this right into the night. And that severe thunderstorm watch that Adrian is in goes all the way south into parts of Alabama. You can see it there on the map, David also into even Mississippi. This is all through tonight. Most of them go as late as 11 p.m., but the storms don't stop then. Watch that line. Damaging wind, the main threat as this comes together in eastern Tennessee, northern Alabama, through the after midnight hours. Then we look at a new storm. This is really prime time for severe weather. A lot of moisture, a lot of dry air behind that low, and it's classic. There's a dry line that sets up tomorrow. We could see damaging winds, big hail, and a few tornadoes in the region that you see highlighted there. That slides east as we go through Wednesday. It is gonna be day after day of severe storms. It will certainly feel like we're almost in April. All right, could be a difficult week ahead. I'll see you in the morning on GMA, Ginger. As you know, we're also watching that massive cyclone it's spinning toward Australia tonight. The winds, the equivalent of a Category 3 hurricane here, reaching 115 miles an hour. 20-foot waves are expected. Strong winds already reaching shore. Thousands of people have been evacuated ahead of the storm, expected to make landfall tonight. Back here at home, and we turn next to the bombshell headline from Washington at this hour. The Republican congressman, who is now leading a congressional investigation into Russian meddling, it turns out had a secret meeting on White House grounds. It was last week, we learned, Congressman Devin Nunes went to the White House with classified information before informing members of his own committee. Now we learn, before that announcement, he had been at the White House the night before. Well, tonight, new calls for him to step down from his post. And here is ABC Cecilia Vega. The top Republican leading what is supposed to be an independent investigation into Russia's election meddling tonight, facing serious questions about impartiality. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes now says his trove of classified information, allegedly showing intelligence officials, may have inadvertently picked up the communications of the president and his transition team, was actually given to him by someone on the White House grounds. I'm not going to tell you where I was at on the grounds uh, because, of course, those are all classified facilities. The California congressman, a member of the president's transition team, now admits he met his source at a secret location on the White House grounds last week. 
The very next day, Nunes briefed reporters on Capitol Hill about his findings and then rushed back to the White House to brief the president. What I've read uh, bothers me and I think it should bother uh, the president himself and his team. The president said the findings vindicated his claim that President Obama wiretapped him. Does he feel vindicated by Chairman Nunez? I, I somewhat do. I must tell you, I somewhat do. But Nunez admits he has no evidence that Trump Tower was wiretapped, and he still hasn't provided his own committee with any proof of his new claims. Now, top Democrats calling on the chairman to step aside. Chairman Nunez is falling down on the job and seems to be more interested in protecting the president than in seeking the truth. As for the Trump administration, they will not say who Nunes met with on the White House grounds. I'm not going to get into who he met with or why he met with them. I think that's something that he has been made very clear, and I'll let him answer. It comes amid those swirling questions about the Trump administration's ties to Russia. Today, word that Jared Kushner, the president's own son-in-law and his top White House advisor, has voluntarily agreed to be interviewed by the Senate Intelligence Committee, making him the first White House staffer to face questions from congressional investigators. During the transition, Kushner met with Russia's ambassador, and he also met with the head of a Russian bank controlled by Putin's government and under U.S. sanctions. But that man has ties to Russian intelligence. Today, the White House said Kushner has nothing to hide. Based on the media frenzy that existed around this, he volunteered to make sure that they, he said, hey, we've made some contacts. I'd be glad to explain them. Let me know if you'd like to talk. New spotlight tonight on Jared Kushner. In the meantime, Cecilia Vega with us live at the White House. And Cecilia, I want to go back to Congressman Nunes. The drumbeat from Democrats tonight growing louder that he must now recuse himself from this investigation. So far, no indication that's going to happen. Yeah, actually, David, there's not. And today, the speaker, the top, uh, the speaker Paul Ryan, the top uh, Republican in the House, said that Nunes is quote conducting a thorough, fair, and credible investigation. David, Cecilia Vega with us live tonight. Cecilia, thank you. Meantime tonight, President Trump at his next move after the failure to repeal and replace Obamacare, a key promise of his campaign. The president blaming Democrats, conservative Republicans, and tonight the first signal here of what he plans next. Here's our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. In a bid to turn the page, President Trump today signed a few bills that actually did pass Congress. Minor measures on cutting regulations. When the president was asked about the big one that didn't pass, no reply, no comment. Faced with a divided Republican Party in Congress, the White House has suggested it may be time to reach out to Democrats. Is the president serious about working with Democrats? going forward after what happened with health care? Absolutely. But wouldn't this require a serious course correction for the White House? I mean, the president's branded Chuck Schumer a clown, uh, you know, worked entirely with, with Republicans on, on this bill. Wouldn't this, wouldn't this require a, a serious change of course for the president? To some degree, sure. And I think the president talked about that. I think he's, um, he, we learned a lot through this process. The health care debacle is especially devastating given what the president said during the campaign. Repealing and replacing Obamacare is one of the single most important reasons we must win on November 8th. He promised to repeal it immediately, but was soon surprised by how difficult it would be. It's an unbelievably complex subject. Nobody knew that health care could be so complicated. After it went down, the president, who's branded himself the ultimate deal maker, seemed a little shell-shocked. It certainly was an interesting period of time. We all learned a lot. We learned a lot about loyalty. We learned a lot about uh, the vote-getting process. From his budget director, a frank admission. I think the one thing we learned this week is that Washington was a lot more broken than President Trump thought that it was. All right, John Carl with us live from the White House tonight as well. And John, the president says he wants to move on now to tax reform, tax cuts. But after the failure to repeal Obamacare, doesn't tax reform become even more difficult? More difficult and a heck of a lot more complicated, David. It's not even clear what the White House strategy will be going forward or even whether or not the president will be offering his own tax reform proposal or wait for Congress to act first. And as to whether or not the president will again try to get support from those hardline conservatives that defied him on health care, 
Today, the White House, when asked about that, said simply, it depends. All right, John Carl with the questions in the briefing room today. John, thank you. We turn next here to the fight against ISIS. More U.S. troops on the way to Iraq tonight. About 300 additional soldiers to advise and assist Iraqi troops in the fierce battle for Mosul. And this evening, the Pentagon now investigating whether airstrikes played a role in the deaths of some 200 civilians there in recent days. Secretary of Defense James Mattis was asked about that today. There is no military force in the world that has proven more sensitive to civilian casualties. We are keenly aware that every battlefield where an enemy hides behind women and children is also a humanitarian field. Secretary Mattis adding the U.S. military does everything humanly possible to protect innocent people, he says, unlike their ISIS adversaries. Next tonight here, a chilling plot uncovered. Authorities tipped off about a very detailed plan to attack a high school, to shoot students, and to bomb the school. Authorities say an 18-year-old honors student was already gathering the materials she needed and that she was determined not to survive. Here's ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas. These are the weapons that school and police officials say were going to be used in a massacre planned for April 5th. A shotgun, bomb-making materials, including pipes for a pipe bomb. A Columbine-style attack allegedly plotted by an 18-year-old student at Catoctin High School, 90 minutes from Washington. There is no doubt in our minds that we averted a disaster up there. According to the sheriff, that student, Nicole Severio, had kept a chilling diary with a timeline about the imminent attack and detail about the school's emergency procedures. But her alleged plot was foiled by her own father, who alerted school officials and police on Thursday when he discovered the diary. Do you feel like at the end of the day the parents put the community in front of everything else? You know, obviously it was had to be a tremendously difficult decision, but uh, they did the right thing. Police say the girl's diary specifically mentions Columbine. It's part of a disturbing trend. An ABC News investigation found in the last 17 years, there have been at least 79 thwarted school massacre plots. More than half of the would-be assassins mentioned Columbine. Police have given no information about a possible motive, but they say there's no evidence of anyone else being involved in this alleged plot. As for the young student, she's been committed for an emergency mental health evaluation. David? Pierre Thomas in Maryland tonight. Pierre, thank you. And an anonymous threat triggering a lockdown at another high school, this one near Kansas City, Missouri. Authorities sweeping the school classroom by classroom, leading students out with their hands on their heads, then busing them to another high school. No weapons were found in the school, but tonight five students have been detained for questioning. There are new clues tonight about that Tennessee teenager and the high school teacher who authorities believe abducted her. Investigators now revealing their secret way of communicating. ABC's Eva Pilgrim is in Tennessee. Tonight, the family of that missing Tennessee teenager is hoping this newly released home video will help lead to her safe return. Do you want to start from the back or do you want to start from the front? Well, you'll recognize her voice if you hear it. This as authorities reveal how 15-year-old Elizabeth Thomas and her former teacher, Tad Cummins, were communicating days before he allegedly kidnapped her. Investigators say the two left each other draft emails on a school computer. The other person would log in, read the message, and then delete it. But Sarah Thomas says her sister was avoiding Cummins when he showed up to her workplace two days before she vanished. She would go and tell people to tell him that she wasn't there. And she would go and hide until he left. After two weeks and more than a thousand tips, still no sign of the pair. We just live for that day when we're going to get a phone call from somebody or even possibly her. She gets hold of a phone, calls and says, I'm all right. I need somebody to come and get me. David, authorities have passed along their information to law enforcement in Mexico and Central America, but say they have no idea where the two could be tonight. David. Eva, thank you. There is still much more ahead on World News tonight this Monday. The urgent consumer warning tonight, your money, the new phone scam. If the phone rings, the one question they warn you not to answer. Also, the deadly shooting rampage today. One person killed, five wounded. Police revealing the possible motive late today. Those two plane crashes, the pilot hitting a home, and then the family killed returning from spring break. And we want your opinion on this story tonight. Should two young girls have been prevented from boarding their flight because they were wearing leggings. The airline facing a huge backlash tonight and their explanation as the news continues. Transforming data storage into an omnipresent force. Is that some sort of hocus pocus? No. 
just the work of some wicked engineers who helped Columbia Sportswear elevate their infrastructure to the cloud. So product production and delivery could work as one powerful entity. Magic can't make digital transformation happen. But we can. That's the power of Dell EMC, part of Dell Technologies. I always thought that cigarette smoking just messed up your lungs. I never thought that at only 45 would give me a heart attack. My tip is do your heart a favor and quit now. You can quit. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW for help getting free medication. At Fidelity, trades are now just $4.95. We cut the price of trades to give investors even more value. And at 495, you can trade with a clear advantage. Fidelity, where smarter investors will always be. Allergy Watch. symptoms distracting you? Doctors recommend taking Claritin every day of your allergy season for continuous relief. Claritin provides powerful, non-drowsy 24-hour relief for fewer interruptions from the amazing things you do every day. Live Claritin clear every day.